Welcome, Angry Faithful, to Nerd Sports. Today, we're going to talk about how to do a riot at a basketball game. <laughs> I, just, I, still, I just had, I still... <laughs> no, I just had the most jacked up response to that in my head. And I'm like, no, not, I'm not going to do it. I pumped the brakes on that before it hit my mouth. And I'm like, no, because once it hits the mouth, dude, it's out there and you can't take it back. Your your one of your inner uh, angels was like, no, 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 bring it back mm-hmm. a little bit, bring it. We're we're not going to do that today. Yeah, and uh, that was another thing. It was uh, let me let me bring it up. I should have done that while we were talking. Go ahead and talk about. Uh, I guess it was non- last night. Uh, Masses Brawl breaks out at youth basketball game, baseball game. All right. So what I will talk about first, the Daytona 500. Um, That was last night. Well, yesterday into last night. So it's the first official race of the season. It's, un- you know, but it's, basically nascar's crown jewel event it is the biggest race of the year it's like quote unquote their super bowl get back here falling all over himself trying to get to the chips and dip anyway so um we had a rookie win yesterday um became like the 21st driver to Notch's first career victory at the Daytona 500. Um, I'm okay with it. Um, it was the debut, the first official regular season debut of the uh, the new next generation car. Um, it's that weird looking car, isn't it? It's we're not talking really about so earlier. much that it's weird looking. It's the fact that if anything happens to it, your day is almost pretty much done. Um, the Chevrolets showed a lot of single car speed, but they didn't look like they worked really well in the draft. Um, Fords and Toyotas really just kind of, you know, pushing at will. Mm-hmm. And you know there was there was some stories there were some storylines going around where um they were saying that some of the uh some of the pushing was actually kind of too aggressive. Um Red Yeah, cuz there was a lot of there was a lot of wrecks yesterday. Yeah. Um <clears throat> now being that this is the first full-size track that these cars have been on a lot of t- you know first time that these cars have been in packs that big every driver that was behind the wheel uh, yesterday was learning learning new car you know trying to figure out how it works and everything but they were talking about some of the driving the pushing um was too aggressive and prime example was the uh, a late race wreck um <laughs> i saw that that's that's pretty cool um brad keselowski was pushing uh ricky stenhouse jr the only chevy in the top five and he was leading with like nine laps to go or something like that and uh, just pushed him too hard and got him sideways and it pretty much dumped him um tore up a lot of really nice race cars a lot of fast cars too um and it just it used to be for for forever it used to be the thing where you know you you could push down the straightaways 
but when you're going through the turns, you, you need to back off before you get into the turns because you can't square up bumper to bumper, you know, all the way through a turn. And with these new cars, because the, the front ends and the rear ends are just, a, they're, they're, they're more round that I've noticed than they have been in the past. And so there's just certain areas that you can push and where you can't push things of that nature. And Brad Keselowski just kind of doing what Brad Keselowski does. He just dumps people that get, that gets in his way. Um, but don't get me wrong. I generally don't have a problem with Brad Keselowski. Um, if you remember from previous episodes where we talked about NASCAR, mm -hmm. I have a disdain for Joey Logano, but, um, you know, it, it's, I mean, Brad, Kesel, Brad Keselowski, he, this year was his first race, first official race under the RFK banner. He, he partnered with Jack Roush with Roush Fenway racing. It's now, Roush Fenway Keselowski. So it's R R R F K racing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so he's a he's a part he's a, he's an owner now um in, in the Cup series. And so, you know, he's he's running a car that he part owns, you know. And and he he almost kind of came across yesterday during the race of I don't give a crap what anybody thinks about me. I'm just going to get out there and do what I need to do. Well, the problem with doing that on these, on these uh, super speedway tracks is you start sending people sideways or into the wall at 180, 190 miles an hour. That tends to stick in people's memory. Mm -hmm. So especially the drivers that get shafted on it. Uh huh. Um, because you're going to get a lot of innocent bystanders in that situation where if you wreck somebody at those speeds, you potentially wreck a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And you wreck a lot of people that, generally speaking, are considered favorites. Like Martin Trex Jr. got taken out in that stupid wreck. Um, or no, Martin Trex Jr. was taken out in a different wreck. But still... Uh, Denny Hamlin was one of the favorites. He 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 had already he had won it three times already. And what is national U.S. National Weather Service has issued a severe thunderstorm watch for Wichita Falls. It'll be in effect until two a.m. Yay! Um, so you know, but the uh, I mean. It, it, granted yes it's it's a it's a new car and you know you're going to hear this you're going you're going to hear this uh old adage that it's a, it's you know it's just a racing deal um mm -hmm. i don't know about you i mean this is me just personally if i was in a position where somebody gave me the opportunity to drive a car for them and i spent and i drove my ass off i wheeled the car all day and took care of it i kept the fenders on it kept the nose you know in good shape and and I, I had put myself in a position to potentially contend for the win or at least a top five in the Daytona 500. And I got taken out of the race because somebody else was doing something that they know that they shouldn't have been doing. I'm going to remember that. I'm just glad number 48 didn't get hit. Or 42. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, the black rifle car. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, he actually finished pretty well. Um, yeah, eleventh. Yeah, he finished eleventh. So, um, well, they're doing they're doing two of them now. Uh, two cars. Yeah, they they spawn, they also sponsor Noah Gregson. He drives uh, Gregson. He drives the number nine car for JR Motorsports uh, in the Xfinity mm. series. But um, you know it's. I like Noah Gregson. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. owns his car in the Xfinity Series. That's JR Motorsports, Junior Motorsports. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I, I generally root for JR Motorsports uh, on the Xfinity side. I, I root for those drivers. Um, you know, Kevin Allgaier, uh, Noah Gregson, uh, Gregson uh, Josh Berry, when he does drive for them, uh, stuff like that. But, uh, I mean, predominantly, I'm I'm kind of a Team Hendrick kind of a guy. 
Uh, but you know, with that being said, it's, uh, I don't know, man. It's, uh, it, it was a good race. I mean, you start, I mean, you, you see the, the day, the Daytona 500, you know, f- curse. I don't want to say curse bug still biting a lot of people, uh, people like, uh, Martin Truex Jr. was his 18th Daytona 500. He still has not won that, won that race. I mean, guys go their entire career. They win championships. They never win a Daytona 500. And like Tony Stewart, he, he replaced uh, Jeff Gordon in the Fox booth for, you know, the Fox portion of the season. And he's got, he's taken 19 wins at different events at Daytona, you know, 19 checkered flags. He's finished 19 different races at that track. And he said he would trade every single one of those for a single Daytona 500 win. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's how much this race means. To me. And for example, when Dale Earnhardt senior won it on his 20th try, I mean, you'll see you, you can what you could look it up. You'll see footage of it because he's driving his car down pit lane after the race. Mm-hmm. Every pit crew came out to give him, you know, and came out to uh, congratulate him. It was like one huge greeting line as he's trying to drive to victory lane. He's just having to hold his hand out and he's just giving people fives on the, all the way down. I mean, because people know, I mean, like this is a seven time champion and he finally got the monkey off his back. Finally won the Daytona 500. And finally put that one in the, you know, check that one off on the box of things to do. Yeah. It's, it's the Daytona 500 and the grandfather clock, uh, run that yeah, Martinsville. Yeah. Everybody wants them. Everybody wants a Martinsville clock, a grandfather clock, but, uh, You'd think that the Texas Speedway would do something like special like that and make it. Well, make their it... trophy is made out of two boots. I mean, they give they give the winner either, either a new Resestall or a new Stetson, and they give them uh, a pair of six shooters. Okay, that would be pretty fucking awesome. I, would, I mean, because if you look, everybody who stands at Victory Lane at Texas Motor Speedway, they've got two revolvers in their hand, and they're shooting them off. I mean, obviously, they're loaded with blanks, but still, mm. you know, they're shooting off those those revolvers. But, I know, uh, I know, I know what I, I was. I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting you, but I figured out what we could do on our TikTok mm-hmm. is you explaining to me sports terms, and you inevitably getting a lot of them wrong. And yes, uh, yeah, I would, I would end up getting a lot of them wrong, anyways. But yeah, so you would say things like. I'm trying to explain what a grand slam in baseball is. And you're like, okay. So if it goes over the fence and the bases are loaded, does the umpire go like this? No, no. <laughs> that's a touchdown. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I could see yeah. you doing that in real life. Yeah. I, I, but, can't, I can't wait till we get everything situated so we can get, get doing some uh, funny stuff. Yeah. I mean, I mean, but I mean, getting back to the Daytona, yes, and we will do that. But getting back to the Daytona 500, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of people that are kind of sounding off the day after. You know, they're 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 really kind of getting after Brad Keselowski for being too aggressive. I mean, he when he was bumping people that hard at the beginning of the race, and it's like you guys have 500 miles. That's 200 laps around that joint. It's way too early to be sitting there beating and banging on people. You know, but um. So next week they're going to Fontana um, for the uh, Auto Club 500. Um, the schedule for NASCAR this year, they uh, they they kind of revamped it. Um, <laughs> so they're going to be going to Auto Club Speedway on the 27th of February. Mar- or, uh, March 6th, they're in Las Vegas. Uh, March 13th, they're in Phoenix, which is going to be where they have the last race of the year to decide the championship. Um, this is going to be the Wise Power 400 next week at Auto Club Speedway. 200 laps, 400 miles. Um, let me see here. Phoenix, Atlanta. Then they're coming to Texas, not Texas Motor Speedway, but they're going to the Circuit of the Americas down in Austin. 68 laps, 231.88 miles. 
Mm. Um, called the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix. Now, I want to go see a race there just because you get a lot of these road course fanatics. A lot of them are F1 and IndyCar, and that's a different kind of a culture, right? Um, as a pair, as opposed to NASCAR fans. I mean, we're more blue collar. We're more the, uh, you know, we enjoy our beer versus wine kind of crowd. Whiskey. Yeah, beer, whiskey, moonshine. Um, And now April, they're going to Richmond. Then they're going to Martinsville. Bristol. Now, Bristol, the first Bristol race, um, it's going to be on dirt again this year. So they're going <laughs> to, they're going to, test these new cars out on dirt we'll, we'll see how that happens see how that plays out um and then april 24th it's talladega for the geico 500 talladega is a faster track than daytona is and yeah so but that's going to be nice um and and is Ricky bobby going to be in there or no 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 the the next race that's going to take place in Texas at Texas Motor Speedway is going to be May twenty second for the All Star Race at Texas Motor Speedway. Hmm. Fifty laps, seventy five miles. They're they're going to run. It's it's the winner of the All Star Race gets a million dollars. Damn. And it's a well, Sunday they, race. They always, oh, I, I, what's you know, the trope I'm not going to lie. I, what's, I want, what's the amount of uh, money that each each one that they get? It just depends. Um, I mean, <sighs> oh, I don't remember here. Hold on a second. Let me, I mean, it just depends on. The different sponsors for each year, you know, um, advertising dollar. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into that purse. But, I mean, these drivers, depending on how they finish, can make a killing. Um, now, Texas Motor Speedway on the 22nd is actually going to hold two races on the same day. Oh, um, uh, so it's going to be the All Star Open, which is the race. It's a it's a seventy five. It's a fifty race shootout to get Johnny, into the what? The purse for the Great American Race is twenty three point six million dollars. Well, total. That's oh, that's the total. Up. Yeah, that's oh, the okay. total. Okay. Yeah, so that's the total purse. Now, in okay, the All Star so, Race, okay, in the All Star Race, it's winner take all. Uh, okay. Yeah. So the all-star open, you have to race your way to get into the all-star race itself. The all-star race is a hundred laps. It's a 150 mile race. So it's a hundred lap feature, right? And it's past champions. Well, the champion from the previous year winners of, of races from either last year or this year, the fan vote or the fan fans get a vote to, to vote a driver in. And then I think like poll winners are being factored into it somehow. Um, they keep changing the format on it, but I mean, nonetheless, it's still pretty cool. Um, and then the longest race of the year on Labor Day weekend, May 29th, the Coca-Cola 600 is a 600 mile race taking place at Charlotte Motor Speedway in Concord, North Carolina, um, just outside of Charlotte. It's a mm -hmm. 400 lap race. And it is the one of the it's one of the crown jewel kind of a you know kind of races where um engine builders love it, but they at the same time also hate hate that race because you're running those engines hard. I mean mm -hmm. anywhere from a quarter to wide open on the throttle. You know, and it's just it's it's constant RPMs, constant RPMs for six hundred miles. A lot of times, engines don't make it. You know, you'll see guys blowing smoke out the back of their car through the, you know, out their exhaust port, you know, exhaust pipes, and all they're doing is just burning oil, and that that's just pure oil hitting those heads. You know, uh, that's it. yeah, I've I've had that happen to me a couple of times. Um, then there is the. Hey, I'm gonna switch the uh, view real quick, everybody. It's just gonna be Johnny because. 
I have to go do something real quick. Be right back. And so for those of you who don't know, that generally means David's got to go take a shit. So, <laughs> all right. Yeah, I know. Planning on the guy. He's not even here to defend himself. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, I know that I'm all about baseball. But, you know, the thing is, I love racing. Speed, octane, just the strategy of it. I mean, it's not a cheap hobby by any stretch of the imagination, but it's definitely fun to watch. It's definitely fun to be a part of. Um, just the personalities behind the steering wheel, uh, personalities on the pit box, uh, you know, things of that nature. I mean, there's definitely some rivalries, um, you know, things of that nature. But I mean, it's it's going to be a, a it's going to be a, a cool season, nonetheless. Uh, so. You know, we're, we're just kind of looking at seeing how the season plays out. So, uh, um, definitely as, as I think as, as a production, as, as a show, um, we may try to do at least one race, um, this year, even if it's just like the November race in Texas or September race, uh, Texas motor speedway, uh, for the playoffs, but, uh, we'll figure that out. Um, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, let me see. Oh, and look at that. That was quick, dude. That that was quick. You pinched that one off pretty quick. Yeah. 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 I shot it out like a cannon. Yeah. I told everybody, I said, when David does that, that generally translates to him having to go take a shit. So. Yeah. Um, NFL, man. Uh, <laughs> what happened on uh, Black, Black Monday? Did we get any leeway of i mean we got a lot of the i didn't look into it yeah it, I, I didn't look into it because i mean let's just be honest i I don't really care enough well but, going in the basketball news uh this is what happened uh courtesy of uh cbs for the uh n a double uh double a uh what it was was the michigan yeah uh, it was the Michigan uh, Wolverines and the Wisconsin Badgers. And uh, Mayhem, after number 15 in Wisconsin, took care of Michigan 77 to 63 on Sunday in Madison, Wisconsin. What being an intense post game, handshakes, line, and change between Michigan coach uh, Juan Howard. Uh, Howard. I guess that's one Howard. Yeah. J U W. Juwan Howard. Juwan Howard. Okay. Yeah. And Wisconsin choke Greg Grit, uh, guard, quickly escalated to uh, an out, uh, all out brawl that involved players and coaches from both teams. The, managers, uh, the madness broke out shortly after the final horn when guard confronted Howard who appeared to be uh, slow to enter the handshake line just near the scores table guard physically stopped Howard from moving past him and the tune exchanged words for ten, uh, tenseness uh, rose in a hurry yeah and this is CBS let me get down to the nitty gritty uh, Michigan choked uh, Jawan Howard suspended five games, fined 40k, and Wisconsin Greg Guard fined 10k after the fight. So, I'm guessing it was the coaches and whatnot. I mean, they haven't really, but neither of the coaches have actually uh, uh, sent out some kind of representative or anything. We've got Staff who's been affected with injuries. It's difficult for me to compose myself in the defense of our staff and our team who did not uh, initiate this event that is clearly captured on TV fed today and not sure what will take lo uh, long to address this. Uh, uh, and I got to. 
the Michigan 80. Uh, there's no excuse for any of our staff or student athletes to get into a physical uh, altercation with other uh, others, regardless of uh, intrigued factors. The AD uh, also stated, I reached out and apologized to the Wisconsin administration for a total un- unacceptable behavior. We will review this uh, situation more thoroughly and work with the Big Ten Conference as they determine their disciplinary action. will determine if any further disciplinary action is needed. So. Yeah. Well. <sighs> I'm all for a good brawl, but yeah, I just watched the uh, hockey when, game where the hockey players just beat the crap out of you. I love hockey for that. Yeah, <clears throat> I love when it comes to basketball. I mean, these guys—they're not on ice; they're on they're on court. A lot of times, they're wearing their sneakers, mm-hmm. right? It's like baseball players. They're digging into the ground. They're static, and they're delivering a full amount of force behind that punch. Um, I don't know. Some of the hockey players. No, can... I, I was just about to say not to take anything away from the hockey fights because, I mean, those guys, they'll get after it. But when you get staff involved, you get coaches that are getting hurt, players that are getting hurt. Sometimes that spills over into the stands fans start getting hurt yeah that's the one good thing about hockey is the fact that you have some kind of barrier yeah to where to the point to where it's not gonna do i think that there's any place for those types of brawls no no absolutely not it's called a boxing ring (laughs) a boxing ring what are you a boxing ring you from the you from the northeast, you fucking mook. Look at you. Yes, um, from the fucking northeast. Back in boxing ring. Um, fucking doors. Anyway, I don't so, know where it comes out. At times, it just comes out. <laughs> it's definitely not Canadian because you would have been like, "Oh, it's Boxing Day." Eh? <laughs> <laughs> What's this all about? <laughs> Hey, I went over to your mom's house and I gave her a full thing, Shorzy. Fuck you, Shorzy. Fuck you, Riley. Anyways, um, so I don't think that there's any place for those types of brawls. I mean, <coughs> you get a couple of fists thrown, a couple of elbows between players, fine. The referees jump in the middle of that and they get it all squared away. Move on technical technical here or maybe an ejection depending on how egregious of a foul it was but no i don't think that there should be any place for that um i mean especially when there's no partition between the court and the fans yeah Um, uh, and and a lot of times i've actually seen a lot of uh fans get hurt really bad yeah Uh, Uh, like people like ron artest before he became meta world peace he went up in the stands and actually decked a fan. Yeah. You know, so there's no place for that. Um, you don't see that. You don't see that too often. And in, in no, because sports. I mean, it happens. There's too many. There's too many high priced contracts for endorsement deals now where companies will dump you in a hot second. I mean, quick, fast and in a hurry. They'll, they'll dump you and they'll cancel your contract so fast to make your head spin. And these athletes that are out there getting these endorsement deals now, they have to think about that kind of stuff because, I mean, they could stand to lose millions of dollars if they say the wrong thing or they throw throw a punch. So, mm-hmm. but moving on to baseball, um, Major League Baseball has officially postponed at least the first week of spring training games. Um Spring training games will start no earlier than Saturday, March 5th. That is a one solid week of spring training games. Now, granted, these are spring training in the fullest sense of the term spring training where the starters that you see coming back from the last year may play an inning, you know, if that, and then get pulled for, you know. Yeah, because you you already said a lot of the people are actually going to training facilities now. 
Well, on their yeah, own like dime. Chris Sale, Chris Sale showed up with uh, uh, Christian Vasquez, the catcher for the Red Sox. Um, they showed up to the spring training facility down in Fort Myers on their own dime. They're down there working out already. They're not wearing any kind of Red Sox gear. They're wearing their personal stuff, you know, uh, your stuff that they've collected. So, I mean, they're, they're, but they're down there working. Um, they, 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 they just want to get back to playing ball. Yeah. I mean, really. Um, <laughs> um, <coughs> don't die. <coughs> yeah, gum it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Um, I just got all this crap in my chest. It's breaking up from all these allergies and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, let me see here. You're talking about them going there on your own dime. Yeah. Um, Let's see if I can find anything news why you do that. Anyway, so the players and the and the and the owners, they just need to pull their heads out of the collective asses and they just need to figure it out. Oh yeah, I forgot to send you that. Uh, the players are wanting more. The owners are wanting a chance here and there. Uh the minor league players, they're getting they're kind of getting lost in the wash. And I think that that's a travesty. I think that that's an absolute crime, to be completely and perfectly honest with you. Oh, yeah, look at that, huh? Yeah, Jay finally uh, sent me the uh, stuff. Nice. Killer. Okay. Um, But, um, you know, I... I just want to see baseball getting played. You know, yeah. I really do. Uh, college baseball is getting a lot of, a lot of play right now. Uh, Cause it's really, it's the only game going. I mean, there's, they're, they're already playing college baseball right now. Their season has already started. Um, so I, it just, the longer that this lockout continues, the more visibility college baseball is going to get. I think that that would be really good for, uh, for collegiate baseball. I mean, these guys are out there. They're playing for pride and they're playing for bragging rights. They're playing for their school. They're playing for their name and they're playing for pride. And, and most of all, they're playing because they love the game, you know? So I don't know, man. It just, it just, it, I don't, I don't understand why we can't, you know, in in the words of Rodney King, can't we all just get along? You know, come to an agreement, find the middle ground somewhere, start there, and then work your way out. But get this figured out, because you start taking baseball away from people, you start taking professional major league baseball away from the masses, and you're going to start to really do some irreparable damage to the game and to your fan base. That's all there is to it because baseball almost didn't come back after the 94 work stoppage. When they didn't have a postseason, they didn't have a World Series that year. And fans were just like, they were fed up. And you'd still still hear those annoying-ass little fans are like, well, I haven't watched any baseball since 94 when they stopped working because they're greedy little bitches. You know, it's like. That's the same kind of people that don't don't root for the Dallas Cowboys because Tom Landry isn't still the coach. It's like, look, man, the guy quit. He isn't the granted, coach. Granted, Jerry, shut up. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> um, you know, granted, Jerry Jones was going to fire him, but, I mean, Tom Landry quit. Pure point is simple. The guy's dead now. So, you know, there's that. But. At least I think he's dead. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Look that Tom up. Landry. Tom Landry. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Pretty I'm sure not... he's dead because the dude was fucking ancient. I want to say he died like 10 or 12 years ago. 
He died in 2000. Okay, so he died 22 years ago. Even better, you know, still, he's dead. Let him go. All right? You can remember the good times that you didn't get to watch whenever he was coaching because you were too young to, to remember that kind of thing. Or you can just fall in line with the rest of Cowboys Nation and just reminisce about the fact that the last time, if you want to watch any Super Bowl highlights from the last time the Cowboys won a Super Bowl, you got to pull out the old VCR and hope that you hope your VHS tape didn't degrade and, you know, to, to that point. You know, they have those on YouTube now, right? You're not helping. I'm trying to advise you. You're not helping. You're, okay, you're, not helping. you're not helping. I'm always hindering it somehow. Hey, look, and I say that as a part-time Cowboys fan, okay? I mean, I'll root for the Cowboys. My fiance, she's a Cowboys fan. I mean, she does have her fa- flaws. And you don't need those flaws on you. No. You can only be no. a fan if I am going to around. point out a flaw and identify it as such, it is not the fact that she is a Cowboys fan. Okay. It is the fact. Wait for it. She's an Astros fan. Okay. I Granted, I, I'll agree with you on that one, sir. Okay. There you go. The point is, they need to come together and they need to figure it out because, I mean, the Players Association, um, they made they made their latest proposal on Thursday and submitted it to the our Major League Baseball. Um, they responded in two core economic areas, Super 2 eligibility and pre-arbitration bonus pool. Uh, the union lowered its ask regarding Super 2, proposing that uh, the top 80% of players with two-plus years of service time become arbitration eligible. Um, Major League Baseball has been clear for months that expanding the eligibility for uh, is, is a non-starter. I mean, they're not even willing to discuss that. But it agrees with the goal of increasing pay for younger players, right? Because, I mean, a lot of times, unless they're coming in hot on this, like, prospect deal where they sign this very large you know, rookie contract kind of a deal, which you is almost never heard of in base, you know, in baseball. And because baseball doesn't have salary cap, but they do have luxury tax. So once your payroll gets over a certain amount, then you have to start paying a luxury tax that gets split up amongst the, the other teams. Mm. But uh you know, Thursday's proposal it also included a, an increase for the uh for the players association or for you know in the major league baseball players association. A figure for a pre-arbitration bonus pool from 100 million to 115 million. So the union initially proposed a 105 million dollar pool, lowering that number to 100 million two weeks ago before raising it on Thursday. So they're all over the map, right? Um, Major League Baseball offered a 15 million dollar pool up from its initial 10 million dollar offer. Um, the concept for such a pool was initially, you know, initially was you know that the union though the league came on on board in an effort to satisfy uh, their desire to get top young players paid earlier in their careers. It, they're just, they're just like, look, no, uh, we're not, we're not going to go up that high. So, I mean, I, I think that depending on what the owners association does next is really going to either a make or break the season. Pure, plain and simple. Um, meetings are supposed to resume. They were supposed to resume today. Um, with both players and owners expected to be in attendance. Um, baseball set a February 28th uh, as as the uh, the date which a deal must be done to ensure that opening day will take place as scheduled on March 31st. So we're, we're already looking. Thanks, bud. So we're already looking at, I mean, we've got seven days for them to pull their heads out and come up with a collective bargaining agreement to avoid having opening day pushed back again, again. So, well, opening day right now is still scheduled for March 31st. So that was the original date. What they already did was they postponed the first week of spring training games. So spring training does not count because what spring training does is they go through all of their non-roster invitees and all of their invitees, you know, uh, and, and they decide who's going to make the big club, who's going to go on with the big team, and who else, you know, is either going to get cut or who's going to get told, hey, you're going to go down, play trip or double, uh, single double or triple A ball, you know. So, but it, it's 
I don't know, man. It it's just so annoying. Is it's like all thirty clubs. I mean, they're 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 presenting this unified front that they, you know, they're strong in their desire to bring back players to the field and fans to the stands. Well, it's like okay. Now, if you go back some of our archives on the sports show, and you, you'll hear me talk about these three hundred plus million dollar contracts. And how I told you that I think that it's going to ultimately be the death of this game. And I was, I'm, I'm absolutely still fervently going to stand behind that statement. Um, Cause you get these guys that make these 300, you know, 330, $350 million contracts, whether it be 10 or 12 years, it doesn't matter. You're still getting paid 300 something million dollars. And what does that do to ticket prices? Sends them up to the roof, Right. Um, well, I just well, it, just put it in uh, perspective. I just watched like uh, this little skit about it had been like ninety four because uh, they were interviewing Kurt Cobain about mm-hmm. ticket prices and everything, and his was really low. And he's like, "Hey, what do you? How do you feel that the ticket prices for uh, Madonna is fifty dollars?" A ticket back then that was a lot of money yeah and he was like who's who's getting 50 dollars he was amazed he was well it's probably higher fuck but he was still uh, coherent enough to go how much does she get paid why is she getting those that amount of money yeah and she's like he was like 50 dollars i mean i i think i think kenny spent uh kenny went to the metallic concert down in dallas a couple of times i think they spent like probably around about 60 dollars or not not yeah 60 dollars for bleeds bleed nose nose bleeds yeah and depending on the availability of those tickets you're gonna see those go north of two or three hundred and nowadays it's ridiculous yeah it's it's getting to the point to where the people that regularly watch these events, I mean, they're not going to be able to go. I mean, they would have to. Right. We talked about this with the Super Bowl. For you and I to take a round trip airfare flight out to LA, get a hotel, uh, you know, figure in the cost of lifts or Ubers, food, plus our game tickets, Mm -hmm. and not to mention concessions at the game itself. Dude, we were talking about fifty six thousand dollars just for the both of us. Yeah, I'm like, absolutely not, absolutely not. You know, I, I just, I, I don't care enough to go watch a game for that amount. I mean, even if it, even if it were the World Series, right? Um, World Series tickets for like, if, if, if World Series, if the Red Sox had gotten to the World Series and it had gone to Game Seven. Mindy and I would have been in Boston for game seven. We would have landed that day. And if we'd had tickets to go to that game at, at a minimum, at a minimum, we're looking at five, $600 a piece. And that's actually not bad. Five or $600 a piece. Well, nowadays that's not that bad. I mean, uh, think about well, it this way. It's the world series. It's a World Series game. I get it. And you I know how ecstatic you would be if you were at the uh, game winning for the Red Sox. I get all that. But at the time, dude, I just myself, you know, I would like to think that coming up on 45 years of age, that I would be somewhat a little bit smarter with my money. You know, I mean, big trips, fine. There's going to be a cost associated with that. Totally understand it. But five or six hundred dollars, you know, a person to get in to a World Series game. Dude, I love the Red Sox. Do not get me wrong. But I, I would have an incredibly hard 
time being able to look myself in the mirror and say, this is an okay purchase. I just, I okay. Do, okay. I, I would, I would, I'm about to make it an okay purchase. Cause this is, this is the scenario that you're forgetting. Okay. Uh-huh. You could say that you proposed to your future wife at the world series where the Red Sox won the world series on that day. Okay. Because that would the that would have actually been the scenario that would actually happen. All right. So that being said, I don't know, man. I'm I, I honestly honestly, I, I don't know. I mean, if I had the money, just if I, I had that kind of disposable income. Yes, absolutely. 100% okay. would be on board with that. But with a normal person's disposable income. Yeah, with a normal okay. person's disposable income and everything like that. Let's just say, for example, <clears throat> that the players and the owners come to an agreement this week. Opening day goes off. As scheduled, okay? I like to take my kids to at least one or two, possibly three ball games a year. Okay. Okay. With ticket prices for Globe Life Field, all right, the new Rangers monstrosity down there in Arlington. All right. They had a Cyber Monday ticket special going on ten dollar game tickets all right ten dollars a ticket all right yes they were nosebleeds don't care i bought tickets to go see the first weekend of the season first weekend in april okay not not opening day and i'm like all right cool and they're going to be playing the uh the angels Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to get to see Mike Trout. I'm going to get to see Shoei Otani. All right. I'm going to get to possibly see. I'm going to possibly get to see Clayton Kershaw if he signs a free agency deal with the Rangers. Okay. Um, You know, and I'm going to get to watch with my boys. Something that I I hold near and dear to my heart is the ability to take my kids to a ball game. Okay, that close to the beginning of the season. Yeah, I'm going to jump on ten dollar tickets because otherwise I'm looking at fifty, sixty, possibly even seventy dollars a seat. Absolutely no way, because with these high ass price salaries that they've got in the game now, and with the way that they're running the the tax revenue for the league. They're pricing everyday people out of the game. Baseball is already an expensive sport. My son, the one that's right over here behind my shoulder, he has a $200 bat that I picked up on clearance from axbat.com. Okay. Otherwise, he'd have been playing with maybe at best a $100 bat. All right. I just bought him $60 cleats, brand new Under Armour, you know, baseball shoes. Um, I, I gave him a pair of my old Mizunu uh, metal spikes because his league can wear metal spikes this year. Those spikes cost me $110. Yeah. Okay. Um, his glove, his glove is a $120 glove. I got on, I got that on clearance for sixty dollars because it was at the end of the it was the end of the season, right? I mean, uniforms, uh, team fees. I mean, dude, just even at the little league level, it doesn't matter if it's Pony, it doesn't matter if it's Cal Ripken, it doesn't matter if it's Babe Ruth, it doesn't matter if it's Sandy Koufax, it does not matter what level they're playing. Baseball is getting inherently too expensive, and. Yeah. 
you well, know, one of like the things, one of the things that I remember from like a few years back, whenever the World Baseball Classic was being played here, yeah, Bob Costas was calling one of these games, and it was between the Dominican Republic and um, uh, crap. It was uh, it was the Dominican Republic and. cannot remember the other one anyways he said that a reason why major league scouts are going international these days is because that's where all the talent's being cultivated because with the wide availability uh, and affordability of basketball and football in america parents are putting their kids into those sports versus baseball which is what the kid may want to play because baseball has become so cost prohibitive it really has i mean then when you start getting into these tournament teams and these traveling teams no dude it just it gets it gets ridiculous it really does because i mean we're talking about four hundred dollars just for a kid to play on a team and then on top of that you got to pay a part of the entry fee for a tournament. You got to pay for room and board. You got to pay for gas to and from plus upkeep on all their equipment. So like if a kid goes through a pair of cleats in a season, you got to go and buy him new shoes. Um, If he slides a lot and he's got holes in the butt and, you know, in the butt or in the knee of his pants, you got to go buy new pants Mm -hmm. just so that way his uniform looks good. Um, I mean, if he breaks a bat, and trust me, you can break an aluminum bat. And then you got these I've aluminum composites that. and you've got these carbon bats. You know, I mean, those things aren't cheap. And you got parents out there that are putting out second mortgages on their house so that they can afford to go out and spend four or $500 on a bat and then spend thousands of dollars to put their kids through all these, all these baseball camps. Banking on what? Like- that. You know, either your kid's going to become a stud and he's going to get drafted out of high school and he's going to pay off your mortgage. Or he's going to throw his arm out and he's going to have to get Tommy John surgery before he's 16 and effectively kill his baseball career. And at that point, the only person that any parent has to blame is themselves. You know, like with my son, we basically kind of took the, the, the fall and the winter off as far as throwing is concerned. I wish I'd have had it thrown him a little bit during the winter months but you know i mean because the he's got great strength in his shoulder great strength in his arm um he's got a, a pretty good base of knowledge to to mold around as far as footwork uh bat you know batting mechanics things of that nature i mean he's 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 a coachable kid and i try to work with him the best that i can i know that his mom does the best that she can to try to work with him uh, but we don't have the money to go take him every week, every month. Hey, there's a baseball camp over here. There's a baseball camp over here. Hey, we're going to take you to Arlington. So that way you can go to the Rangers baseball camp or anything like that. Cause I don't have $1,200 to smack down and say, Hey, look, here you go. I would love to have that. I would love to have that, but it's, it's too, it's too high of a cost. Yeah. And, you know, I can't justify that. I can't justify saying I'm going to ju- I'm going to sacrifice this bill or I'm going to sacrifice that bill just so that way I can get him in there. Because at the end of the day, you know, the odds of him getting drafted for the big leagues, pretty slim. And that's even if your kid is an actual stud. OK, if your kid is an actual stud. You know. And if my boys behind me don't start behaving. And I'm talking to my youngest. He's going to lose something. (laughs) Parenting wall on air. So. um, You know, it's. I can't justify. I can't look my kids in the in the in the in the face and go, you know what? I put everything we sacrificed everything so that way you could play this game at the highest level that you could play it sorry you didn't get drafted 
but there you go. I would rather my kid understand what the term sacrifice means on both his level and my level. You know, like, yeah, I can't go to this camp, so I'm going to have to sacrifice video game time to go work extra hard at this empty sandlot field. So that way I have a better chance of playing this game at a higher level. And even if he still doesn't get drafted, the life lessons and the self-discipline and, and, and every other thing that comes with what you learn between those foul lines, which was my ethos as a coach when I coached Little League, is that what your kid does between those foul lines is a direct reflection of how he's going to behave outside those foul lines. You know, if I if, if your kid's on the field and he's smart mouths and pops off to one of the parents, that kid's running. If I see him slamming his equipment around and mistreating it, that kid's going to run. I'll pull him aside and be like, you want to know why you're doing this? You know, if and, and I've, I've had a player. I, I, I've had a player smart off to his mom during practice. One, I, I tell the parents, let me coach, you know. But the kid turns around and just says something incredibly hateful to his mother. And I looked at his mom and I said, I've got this. I said, you come here. And I pulled him off to the side. I had one of my other coaches continue with what I was doing. I pulled this kid off to the side. I said, look, I catch you talking to your mom like that again, and I'm going to bench you for a game. Uh, uh, d- 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 you eat. I'm d- AV conversation. Okay. All right. So we're parenting on air, people. There you go. Mm-hmm. So, you know. And you, know, you got those parents that are that are they're overly aggressive. I've had those parents too. Mm. Okay, uh, you know, I mean, it like that upset to the point where they make their kid cry during a game or during practice, and it just totally takes their head out of the game. Not like that that one coach that goes to the the. Yeah, no that that that's all pure sarcasm, and that's complete parody. The 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 kids know that hey, the coach is going to come up here and insult me. You know, they just have a parent that's videoing it for, for TikTok purposes, you know? So, I mean, and those are the type of coaches where, I mean, kids enjoy playing for coaches like that because they make the game fun because it, yes, it's, it is about hard work. I mean, Derek Jeter said that talent will get you on the field, but hard work will keep you there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and it's about how much effort the parents are willing to put into this as well, because Dropping your kid off for practice two or three times a week is not going to cut it. You need to be a, you need to be working with your kid because if your kid learns something, but then they go home and they sit on their butt and they play Fortnite or freaking whatever it is that they're playing, Call of Duty or whatever it is, and they're not working out and they're not working on their form, they're not carrying a baseball around, practicing the grip, they're going to lose that skill because baseball is a perishable skill. It's just like land navigation. And yeah, actually, yes, like riding a bike. It, they're perishable skills. So you, you need to commit to practicing, practicing, practicing. Every sport is that way. Hockey, bas- basketball, football. Um, Axe th- throwing, if you get lucky, you hit like dead center and it just bashes it so much. It's to the hilt. Like, I don't know, some, some weird you, guy. You, you, you ever hear the term that a blind squirrel finds finds a nut every once in a while oh yeah that's most of my life dude yeah yeah (laughs) so no saturday you were like the personification of the blind squirrel you just happened to get a couple of nuts that day and i'm just like look at this guy but anything that you do that's that's athletic or just anything in general in your life you have to put forth that effort you have to put you have to put in the hours. You have to put in the practice because otherwise you show up and you've got all this talent, but you don't do any of the work and you've got a bad attitude and you expect things to get handed to you. And I'm sorry, if I was your coach, I'm going to sit there and look at you and we'd be like, why don't you go park your butt for a minute and think about some stuff? And it may cost us this game, but I'm going to teach you a lesson. And if that, and if that lesson involves a degree of humility, by God, so be it. Because yeah. apparently the parents aren't doing it. So where does that fall? 
You know, I mean, that's like drill sergeants or drill instructors. When you send a kid off to the military and he's one of these snot nosed ass kids that sits there and talks back to the drill instructors. It's not our, it's not our job as an NCO. It's not our job as, 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 as a, as, as, as a drill sergeant or a drill instructor to parent your child. It's not our job to teach your kid how to be an adult. That is your job, your job. From the time that they shot out your out of your wife's crotch to the time that you turned them loose and put them on the plane and sent them my way, they should have a working knowledge of what it means to be an adult before it's they even, even step foot downrange. It's, By the time they get downrange, when they come to me, my job as an NCO is to sit there and go, "This is how you shoot. This is how you move. This is how you communicate, and this is how you fucking PT." Now you take this stuff that I've just given you and you carry it with you to your regular union where they're going to give you more specialized training to help them carry on with whatever mission it is that they've got. That is the job of the drill instructor. That is the job of the coach to to work with the kids, to fine tune the hard work that they're putting in during the week when they're away from the team. But you just don't see that anymore because everybody's involved with these video games. They're involved with spending time on their phones you know, they're doing TikToks, they're doing YouTube videos, or they're live streaming on Twitch. You know, it, 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 there's too many distractions out there. And I'm not saying that people aren't capable of multitasking, but it, it's it, kids these days have zero drive. Zero drive. And it's a direct reflection of the amount of participation and involvement that you see from these parents a lot of times. And it's a sad state of affair. The the worst and the saddest thing I've ever seen. Well, two things. I won't I won't get into the other one. This is the main thing when I was working as a correction officer. I had this. I had one of the mothers that came in for a visitation and everything like that. Talking to her son, blah blah blah. She gets away, and I was going outside to go go to break at the time. And she comes up. She's like, "Hey, can you do me a favor?" I was like, "Uh." Go ahead and tell me what your favor is first, and I'll see if I can help you out, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Because I'll help you out. Can you make sure my son is treated good and everything? Because he didn't do this. I was like, ma'am, I hate to tell you this right now, and I'm being the nicest I could possibly say this. Because if you say verbatim, word for word, to the other officers or 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 even someone to reprimand me what i'm about to say 98 percent of the people in prison didn't do it yeah but verbatim what i'm about to tell you they're gonna tell you that you got off really 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 light she's like what are you gonna say the judge found enough evidence to convict your son of a crime which he is parent uh he's doing right now he's serving his time you apparently failed as a parent to teach him not to do the things that the judge verified that was a crime. So I will not be helping out your son other than the point to where I am legally supposed to help out. And I walked mm-hmm. off, had my cigarette, walk off. Next, <laughs> I got a talking to the next day. <laughs> You're like, my my captain was like, Dickerman, I need to talk to you real quick. I was like, you're out of line. You're not wrong. You're out of line. No, no, no. <laughs> no, my captain was like, hey, uh, did you? I was like, yeah, I know I was going to have this conversation. Did she say verbatim? She's like, yeah, she got off easy. She, he was like, I can't do anything about this. And you're, pro- and I, I, I had to talk to the warden and everything after that. After I talked to my captain, he's like, you're probably going to have to see the warden. I was like, okay. <laughs> I've been yelled at by a general. You think a warden's going to scare me? I can leave this job. I couldn't leave that job. And, and, the, and the general could lock me up for good uh-huh. for just being insubordinate. And you think a warden's going to scare me? Yeah, not going to happen. I, I, had a, I had a lieutenant that was, uh, that was really hard on people and everything like that. And he hated dealing with me because he's like, what? I, I, I'm trying to, you know, he, he was trying to be uh, a bully. And he's like, I can't be a bully to you. I was like, dude, I hate to tell you this, but I've been, I've been yelled at by people that could put me into jail for nothing 
but looking at them funny. I just said this at work. When I started getting my butt chewed or been threatened with how, hey, you're, I'm going to need to have you come in and sit down and talk with me. They're like, okay. And they're like, what? You know, what's with the blase attitude? But like, to be completely and perfectly honest with you, I've had my ass chewed by better people. <laughs> yeah. You know, Pretty and much. it's not... And it's not me being disrespectful or insubordinate. It's just me stating an absolute undeniable fact. I mean, I've had my ass chewed by better people. Yeah. You know, and. I've, I've had the same thing. I've had my ass chewed by better people, too. And when they after they chewed my ass and everything, we, we still went out to drinks and we still. It, it was it was, you know. We laughed about it, and, and like I can't believe you did that. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna fuck up. It's like Lieutenant Dufresne from Inglorious Bastard. Yeah, you know when uh, <laughs> the Nazi was sitting there. You couldn't be shot for this. Shot? No. Chewed out? Yeah, I've been chewed out before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, but uh there there's no other news is there i can't think of anything off the top of my head oh wait hold on we have you see that don't you what your kids playing around in the background holland did this oh (laughs) i didn't see so uh i'm gonna put my son on the spot another joke of the day this is your weekly inappropriate joke brought to you by my son, Colin. Colin, front and center. I don't know one. Hey, you better think of something off the top of your head right now. Nope, nope, no help. Get up. Come here. Oh, I, no, come on. Can I phone a friend? No, nope. you can't phone a friend. There's no lifelines here. Come on. You hush. No, come on. Get down in the shot. Get down in the shot. I want people to, I want people to see you squirm. Get down here. Take a knee. Take a knee and come up with a joke. Here we go, people. <laughs> and we're well, uh, dead air. Pretty. So hit the next page. Follow him with that. Wait, no, 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 no. Start over. You know, put your own face in the shot. See this? See that screen on the right? Mm-hmm. That's what we're seeing. That's what the people see. Go mm-hmm. ahead and talk. You call a woman pretty, she'll forget the next day. Call her fat one, she'll remember the rest of her life. They say elephants never forget. <laughs> that was pretty good. Now, this is the disclaimer. <clears throat> I should have prefaced this. That joke does not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of his father, i.e. me. However, he does he does know how to he, he does respect women. He just said that. These are the jokes, people. They're not dicks. Quit taking them so hard. <laughs> and on that note, I'm David Dickerman. <laughs> Johnny Skelton. And this is Nerd Sports. Number 56. About to be number 50. 56. Uh, oh no, my, 46. no, 46. 46. That's right. 46. I was like, did, did I miss 50? We got to do something for for the fiftieth, yeah, for the fiftieth show. Hey, this is your um, show, so you figure it out. God, you know what? You know, I found a Funko the other day. You you know from the office, right? It's an actual Dundee Award. Oh, cool! It's a Funko Dundee Award. Hmm. I'm like, huh? So, I've got what? We've got three weeks before the fiftieth. So we got a okay. So I think I'm going to find an actual Dundee award, like on Amazon or something like that. I'm going to order it. I'm going to have it brought in. And um, okay, so he used one of his lifelines. He has a fish that can break dance. It can only do it for 20 seconds, and it can only do it once. 
Wow. Okay. Yeah, I see. Get it. So anyways, I'll figure out something for the 50th. Uh, we'll just kind of have our own kind of internal fanfare. I don't know necessarily that I want to give anything away. Because when I'm talking about giving something away, sports related, that's not cheap. No. And anything, no. And anything of substantive, you know, value, I'm going to be selfish. And I'm, I'm, I'm currently working with my fiance, my future wife, my beautiful bride to be, um, working on constructing the backdrop for the new st- or for the new office uh for the house that we're having built so yeah i'll figure it out i've got four weeks to get it done so there, there's that anyways yeah. like we were saying i'm johnny skelton i'm david Diggerman. and we are our angry me production and thank you for listening to yet another episode of nerd sports victory yes <laughs>